Okay, everyone, so now we are going to cover um, part three of the My Lady book, and I just want to give a little quick note. I apologize if my face is super shiny and super tan. I just did a um, Jessner's peel, a medium deep chemical peel, which the video will be released on Friday, and this is as worse as it's really going to get. Well, actually, no, it'll probably get darker in about a day or so, but most of the peeling is happening now. We're actually going to cover these in a later chapter, so just in case you're wondering why my face looks so tan, I did not, you know, go out and get tanned. This was all induced for good skin. <laughs> but anyhow, we're going to be talking about how to get good hair in this chapter. This is um, Hair Care Part 3, and it's why a majority of you are here and what a lot of our class is going to consist of in cosmetology. So we're going to be covering now Chapter 14, which is Principles of Hair Design. Um, they always pick the most interesting model photos in this book. Some of them are very nice, others are very fashionable, and others are a little too edgy. <laughs> Um, but anyhow, they start off the chapter by talking about how good hair is very subjective. Every hairstyle that we've had at some point was iconic for a while, so everyone will talk about, um, you know, Colleen Moore, they give that example. She is the classic um, page boy flapper right there. So she was responsible for wearing the traditional um, sharp, blunt, bobbed look that was very common for women in the 20s. This was a social, um, a social uh, expression, uh, the cutting that hair that, that short and then darkening it. Every era has, um, you know, specific hair textures. So, for example, the '80s. We all of the '80s. They had, you know, eccentric and whimsical fashions and whimsical hair. These big, crazy perm styles. The '90s that everyone loves about was similar to the '80s, but kind of toned down and changed. So, as we learn more about hair and we have more technology, that also influences our fashion sense and, to an extent, the um, social climate you live in. Um, the fashion is a way of uh, making a statement. So that's why you want to know. Um, that hair is always changing, it's always evolving, so is skincare, makeup, all those things, and they um, work together to create a look. So know that um, when you're designing, it's going to start with the consultation, and this is something you'll get good at um, in time. Um, typically, I find that a lot of students have a lot of trouble with this chapter, they get overwhelmed. Don't worry, we've all been there at some point. This is something you'll get used to. I always say kind of get used to what you're doing now or what the trends are now, and that will help you kind of, um, you know, get into other things because you're gonna have clients that might want something that's out of your comfort zone and that's gonna be uncomfortable for you but it's something you'll have to learn how to work with. So know that design has a philosophy. Um, they give the example of you know people doing buildings, constructions, visualizing it, drawing. That is kind of what we do. They also give the um, you know, that where inspiration comes from. The book, I'm gonna challenge this. The book says that a lot of inspiration comes from nature, which is true to an extent. I wanna challenge that and say majority of inspiration now is coming from Instagram. So like way back in the day, it was harder to get clients. It was like through word of mouth. Now we have this lovely technology to use for good at our fingertips that we can use to promote ourselves. So your Instagram is gonna be your portfolio and that's why I tell all of you later on in the book to um, make sure that you have a separate Instagram, keep it clean, keep it non-controversial, keep it about supporting other artists and supporting yourself. So a lot of um, people will come in with pictures. Uh, back in the day, it was tend tended to be more magazines. People would read People Magazine and say, oh, I want that color, that style. And that is still there to an extent of a lot of your clients that want great coverage. So it's usually a good place to start when you're working on consultation that you want to get the client to, you know, can you show me a picture? Can you show me um, an idea? If they show you a celebrity's haircut and color, you know, chances are you're not going to get that exact style. You can get close to it. And then you want to break it down. Like, what do you like about this picture? Do you like the color? Do you like how the contrast is? That's going to help you um, figure out how you want to design the hair. You can design the hair through color, hairstyling, hair cutting, perming, relaxing, all that good stuff. Um, you might know that a hairstyle from an early era might inspire you to re reinvent it in a modern look. That is the case currently with the 80s. People are bringing the perms back, people are bringing the mullets back to be fashion mullets. Um, some people like to wear a vintage look, which is really cool. And I always stress that it's important to know how we did hair back then. That might inspire you. You may remember um, Charlie's Angels in the 1970s. Fair or false, hair was huge. I always tell my students, buy all three seasons of Sheer Genius and watch them because some of the challenges, they make the stylists in the show recreate these looks. My favorite episode was the uh, they had Farrah Fawcett. This is a good little challenge to do um, on one another mannequins. Take um, one of the Charlie's Angels and recreate their look in a modern way. So you can, you know, maybe get the volume, but not, you know, recreate it exactly. Or you can do maybe the natural shiny glossy color, but get some volume in there that looks modern. Hair that has movement and isn't flat and like stays um, straight. Things like that are things you should be thinking about. This is also a chapter where I tell you guys, practice in one another, practice on your mannequin. 
The book tells you um, when you get your ideas, your ideas are always good. There is no such thing as a stupid idea. But you first want to practice it on a mannequin. You don't want to give someone this crazy, um, you know, vertical style that looks like the Bride of Frankenstein because they might cry. Um, but if you do it on your mannequin, here's the best part, and this is what I love because everyone gets worried when they're first working with mannequins. Your mannequin will love everything you give her or him. The mannequins don't talk. They start talking, it's a big problem. <laughs> But use your mannequins, have fun, let your ideas run wild, your creativity go crazy. I still do this as an educator. You know, I take my mannequins, and I remember my cosmetology teacher loved her. She wrote in my last, um, you know, student review that, uh, that I had a very whimsical style, which is so true, because I used to do these crazy looks. I did like the turkey hairstyle, um, all kinds of crazy things. So they always give you the um, example that sometimes the best teacher is time and trial error process that comes with experience. You're gonna fail, you're gonna have someone that doesn't like something that's part of you know being in this field. Don't let it get to you personally and try harder the next time. There is no such thing as failing, it's only learning. They also say that a lot of students tend to you know, take the safe route, which I understand. You don't wanna get out of your comfort zone. You want a success, but you also wanna um, have a success that's planned. You don't want to have something come out of nowhere and you're like, oh my gosh, you're panicking and worried. We've all been there. Being safe and too, being safe can be translated into being too dull, but I understand you might have some anxiety, so you can play it safe, but have fun with the mannequins. Practice in one another without you know, doing something that might be permanent. I was once a model for students that needed a roller set model. They didn't have a long haired model. I said, you know what, fine. I looked like a crazy um, bride gone bad, but you know what, I can just pull my hair back or shampoo it. They got to get the practice in and that's what matters. Um, they also use the term cookie cutter. That's a hair designer who learns a new haircut and gives it to everyone that sits in her chair for the next month or year. Right now, pause this video and type in on YouTube, don't be that stylist. Go ahead and do that now. Um, how many times do you have a teacher that lets you watch YouTube videos um, or crazy clips? But that's an example of a stylist you don't wanna be like. Cookie cutter stylist will give you the same cut and says, oh, it looks so good, it looks so original. And then they'll like do it from the next person that comes in. Think outside of the box. Um, also, you want to know if a client wants something and they've wanted the same thing for many years, don't try to change that. That's what they want. I have a client that comes in um, at my current job and she wants her hair, she wants a perm, she wants a mullet, and she wants it yellow and she doesn't want to cover all of the gray. So when the student salon was closed, she actually um, grew her hair out and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't even recognize her. It was long. She called back, chop it all off, I want it gone. So we had to do what she wanted. You always do what the client wants, and this is the whole where the whole saying comes in. You can give the client what they want, you don't give them good taste. It's what the client wants, you kind of guide them to it. The only time you really want to say no to a client is if it's something you really don't specialize in and you know that it's not ethical because you'll not make it right. The other thing is that you might give them um, a bad service, so you don't want that. You want to find someone who specializes in what they want. So know that with hair design, there are some elements. Um, there are, let's see. There are five basic elements, line, form, space, texture, and color. So when you think of a line, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a line if you like look at a line. And for those of us that know um, a lot of us hairdressers, we are dyslexic or have some form of dyslexia, so it's kind of hard to envision. Try to draw this out and look at the pictures. Know that um, lines define form and space. Um, they create shape, design, and the movement of the hairstyle. And the eye follows the line in the design. They can be straight or curved. And there's four basic types of lines. Lines can be horizontal, vertical, diagonal, or curved. Your horizontal lines will create width. They extend in the same direction and maintain a constant distance apart from floor to horizon. So think of like a bob. A blunt bob is a horizontal line. They make that shape. Vertical lines create length and height in hair design. They make a hairstyle appear longer and narrow as the eye follows the line up and down. Typically, you'll see a lot of vertical styles when you're working with ethnic hair. So if you have locks and you're gonna stack the locks or the braids, you can make them stick straight up. Um, if you're using a crimper, you can actually frizz and tease the hair if you're doing an editorial look and almost do like a um, cat scratch style look. Typically, you'll see lines in an appropriate way if someone has a high ponytail or if you're looking up and down at a ponytail. You'll also see um, the small bridal updos having a good amount of vertical line design. So vertical doesn't have to be standing straight up. It can also be down if like the hair's in a ponytail, you're tracing it up and down. Um, the book gives this really cool example of that one style right there that's stacked. Diagonal lines are positioned between horizontal and vertical lines. They are often used to emphasize or minimize facial features. They could be used to create interest in hair design. So think of diagonal lines as an A-line bob. When you're cutting A-line, you're doing um, a diagonal line like that. Some graduated bobs may go up. Um, some people will layer in an editorial style where they'll cut one layer and then cut a drastic layer. That's another example of diagonal lines. And then you have that negative space in there that you can fool around with color. 
Curved lines are lines moving in a circular or semicircular direction. They soften in design. They can create large or small full circle or just part of a circle. Curved lines may move in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. They can be placed horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. Curved lines repeating in opposite directions create a wave. What that's saying, think of a curved line, because I know this is hard to understand as being like a C-shape. So if someone has like those um, funky looking bangs that are like that curved bangs, that's an example of a C-shape that you're cutting out there. It's almost like a lunar or a moon shape. What a, what a curl is, a curl is a series of C's and S's. So think of this being a curl. This is one C-shape, this is an opposite C-shape. That will make up a curl texture. I had my cosmetology teacher was amazing explain that to me and I'm like, oh, now it sticks. So if you think about a wave being almost like a C-shape or there's also the C-shape design, a curl is a series of C's that make up an S-shape. When you start doing finger waves, you'll create a C-shape, that will be one ridge, you'll create an opposite C-shape, that'll be another bridge, and they create a wave and a curl. Um, so that's gonna be your curved lines. They typically are, and when they say they soften, think about a short bob. If someone has those bangs and it's a bob style, it's gonna be softer as opposed to a blunt horizontal line. So get familiar with all these pictures in this book. Um, look up, um, actually go to Barnes & Noble if you have a bookstore or two, um, any bookstore will do that has a hair magazine, they have hairstyles. My assignment for you is to go in there, circle it and apply what you learn here to that and come back to class and we'll talk about that. That's an assignment I always have people do because it's fun, it's active and it makes you think about what you're um, doing. So when you're designing what lines you can create, um, hairstyles are created by the type of line, direction or combination. There's single lines, parallel lines, um, contrasting lines, transition lines, and directional lines that you can design with. So your single lines are gonna be the one length hairstyle. They're best for clients that require low maintenance when styling hair, because it's all one length, it's just straight and it goes right across, it's one line. Parallel lines are repeating lines in a hairstyle. They can be straight or curved. The repetition of lines creates more interest in the design. A finger wave is an example of a style using curved or parallel lines. Um, finger waves are not really that common. You can do them with an iron. They have special double barrel curling irons you can have fun with that creates a thermal look. You can do it with a Marcel iron. Contrasting lines are horizontal and vertical lines that meet at a 90 degree angle and these lines create a hard edge. Contrasting lines in design are usually for clients that can carry a strong look. It's a client that knows the style is a lot of maintenance. It's typically the haircut you're going to charge more for. Um, let's see if the book gives a... Here's an example, and I know it sounds like weird when you read it like that. That's that funky haircut where you have a shape down here and then you have another sharp layer here. It's a haircut that will need a lot of maintenance. It also creates um, a style that needs a lot of maintenance because you have uh, different lines that contrast with one another. It's, it has different um, focus points in there and it makes you like put this style together like, oh, this is a sharp cut. This is usually the fashion cuts you'll see in magazines and runways and this is something that you'll simplify for your client and give them something that you put your own touch on and that they can wear and style at home because being able to teach a client how to style a hair is a world of difference from being the 20% of stylists versus the other 80% that are average. So transitional lines are usually curved lines that are used to blend and soften horizontal or vertical lines. Um, they're usually used when you're layering, you're using blending shears, they bring things together. Directional lines are lines with a defi definite forward or backward movement. Um, so an example of a directional line, um, they don't give an example here. I would say when you're styling, if you do like upstyling, you have like lines that go back here. That could be an example. You're directing the hair in a certain way. Braiding might be an example of that. Um, think of a directional lines as they are, um, they're directional. They go in one direction. It's definitive. So braiding would be an example, or even a ponytail. It's, you're directing the hair back. It's all going back in one direction. There's not these like, there's not any craziness going there, going on there. The next type of design is form, and form is going to be the mass or general outline of a hairstyle. It's also um, three-dimensional, has length, width, and depth. You'll also refer to the form as volume, so when someone has volume, they're referring to the form. Um, it's usually the... And you'll also hear the term silhouette in this um, description. Silhouette is the part of the overall design that the client will respond to first. Generally, simple forms are best to use and more pleasing to the eye. The hair form should be in proportion to the shape of the head and face, length and width of the neck, and shoulder line. So if you have a client that has very um, thin features and a very thin face, what that's meaning is if you have a thin client, you don't want a hairstyle that's huge and obnoxiously large, like this big, it's gonna make her look like she's wearing a wig. On the flip side, if someone has like larger facial features and you give them a too sleek, too tight look, it can exaggerate what you don't want them to um, see. 
So you're using the form to structure um, the proportion of client's face. So if I had a hairstyle that was huge, big, and poofy, that would look ridiculous. That's why I keep mine like medium length. I don't keep it too um, thin. Sometimes I can pull off a very thin, sleek, straight look. So this is where it's important when you're talking about um, designing. And this will take um, time. You can also create the form with textures, crimpers, all that good stuff. Space is the area surrounding a form or area of a hairstyle or area the hairstyle occupies. So you're more aware of positive space and negative space. Um, in hair design, with every movement, the relationship of form and space change. You must keep in mind um, that every angle will not only form a being created, but the space is surrounding the form as well. So know that an angle will create um, positive and negative space. Also be aware that um, this space can contain curls, waves, or straight hair. So when you're designing hair, you want to keep um, the texture consistent unless you're going for a straight look in the bangs or fringe area and a curly texture here for one look. Typically that works fine, but you don't want to have um, someone with um, positive space that's straight and the negative space that's curly because that will be too much of a contrast that a client would not be happy with. Also, you can get the point across the space. Think of positive and negative space when you talk about highlighting. So the 90s are coming back with the um, almost like the checkerboard or skunk hair where it's blonde, dark, blonde, dark, blonde, and dark. That's an example of that where you have um, positive space being light, negative space being dark, and that creates a contrast. You can use it to make hair fashionable and bold, or you can use it to be subtle. So know that design texture refers to wave patterns that must be taken into... Design texture is the next part. Um, it refers to the wave pattern that must be taken into consideration when designing a style for your client. All hair has natural wave pattern, straight, wavy, curly, or extremely curly. Um, an example is that straight hair reflects light better than other wave patterns, and straight hair reflects the most light when it's cut to a single length. So when you talk about um, the texture that you're working with, be familiar with how straight hair behaves, and you know, be familiar with how curly hair behaves. Waves um, can be when you have wavy hair, you can actually comb and manipulate it into um, create horizontal lines. Curly hair and extremely curly hair do not reflect much light. They might be coarse, they might be drab, and that will um, impact how you style it, what products you used, how you're um, getting your lightings in if you're doing an editorial shoot. Um, curly hair creates larger form than straight or wavy hair does because it has more volume, it's like got more space. Straight hair is from here and it hangs down, so it creates less space or less form. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break here, take a five minute break, relax, and I'm gonna come back and talk about creating texture design with tools, and then we're gonna go into um, how we can change up um, the design, and then we'll talk about the other types of design.